podcasts, classes. How do you handle all of the information that's coming at you that you can learn about your business? How do you learn what you need to learn and not just get totally sidetracked by whatever comes out at your new favorite podcast episode? Today, I'm answering a listener's question on how to avoid information overwhelm, what to do with all the information coming at you. Hi, and welcome to Explore Your Enthusiasm, episode 206 with me, Tara Swiger. Today we have a question from Selma about information overwhelm, and this is something a lot of you know I know you struggle with. So let's listen into Selma's question. Hi, Tara. This is Selma Hamilton. Uh, my business is Selma L. Hamilton Designs, um, which is www.selma. Lhamilton.com. First of all, I want to say I absolutely love your episodes. I watch them. I get energy from them. I have been listening for quite some time. Loved it when you used to go to the outside cafe and have your coffee and talk. And I really, really love that. Um, I love them now. Any information I receive from you is always a high bonus. What I would like to have you do a podcast on is I am absolutely overwhelmed. I have been in business for over 30 years, and trying to take myself to the next level, I am exhausted. Most days, I my brain is on overload. I'm trying to brand. I'm trying to learn Photoshop. I'm trying to read all these magazines and books. And I thrive on marketing books, but the podcast, the not because I, I don't listen to just yours. I listen to other ones, and I'm overwhelmed with all this information going into my brain. And I have both of your books, and I don't even have time to open them. I'm just overwhelmed. What can we do to just make it easier? I'm afraid I'm going to miss something if I don't listen to a podcast. I'm going to screw up. I'm not going to be able to take it to the next level. I'm not going to be able to – I feel like right now I'm a factory worker. I – and producing so much and just trying to get ahead. And I feel like I'm the hamster on the wheel. So if you could address that, you would be my queen for a day. Thank you. So thank you so much for writing in, Selma. I'm glad you like the podcast. Um, first of all, it is totally normal, totally normal, especially when you're taking in so much information, like it sounds like you are, to feel overwhelmed with everything that's coming at you. You're not doing anything wrong. Um, You're experiencing a lot of input and you're trying to manage all of that input. So it's really normal. It's part of the growth process to feel like this, to feel like you need to learn everything and you can't possibly learn everything, but if you don't learn everything, everything will fall apart. It is just a normal part of the process to be like, inundating yourself with information and then being kind of overwhelmed with all that information, especially if you're a questioner. So if you've listened to my episodes about the four tendencies, you can scroll back to see an episode about the four tendencies. You will um, you will maybe already know if you're a questioner or not. Questioners like to get a lot of information. Obligers get a lot of information and then take it to mean they have to do what they hear. It's a little bit like what your question sounds like is you feel like you have to do whatever anyone tells you you're obligated to do it in order to have a successful business. So it's normal. It's normal to take in a lot of information. It's normal to feel overwhelmed. The answer is actually really simple and you might be annoyed with my answer. You need to stop. You need to stop listening to all the podcasts. You need to stop reading all the blog posts. You need to stop watching all the YouTube videos. You need to stop reading all the email newsletters. You need to stop and you need to unsubscribe from a bunch of them. Maybe even mine. Because when you listen to someone else's show or you read someone's email lessons, you are letting them dictate what to focus on. Literally, when you read any email from anyone, you're letting them set the agenda. The power, the responsibility, the obligation of having your own business is for you 
to set the agenda, for you to decide what matters and what you and your business need from you, and then for you to do that. And then if you need to seek information to support that, you do that then. But it has to start with you and your agenda. So as long as you are taking in all the information that comes at you, you are going to be scrambling to make sense of it and to try to implement it. But this is not like a school or a job. I and all the other teachers you listen to don't set the agenda for what you are supposed to learn. You and your business and your goals need to set the agenda. Then you look for what you need. Do you need tools? Do you need skills? Do you need mentorship? Do you need accountability? And then you use what you need to get to where you need to go. So, so Starship Captains will tell you, this is a thing I talk about over and over. It's in their orientation. I say it all the time to them. You need to figure out what where you want to go in your business first, set goals first, then take a class or ask a question or get support to reach that goal. The tools are all here for you, like a big toolbox, but you don't need to use every tool in the toolbox to get to where you need to go. And if you try, if you make it about using all the tools that are offered to you, you're not gonna have anything, right? If I gave you a real toolbox with hammers, screws, drills, etc., screwdrivers, you aren't gonna build an awesome house or even decorate a room by using every tool in the toolbox. You're going to use the tool that you need for that job when you need it. You don't get the most value out of your toolbox by just putting every tool to use no matter what. You get the most value out of your toolbox by first deciding what you want and then reaching for it and using it. So this is why I talk so much about setting a goal and then making a plan. That has to be the first step to any learning or research you do. That has to be the first step of anything you do is to decide where you want to go and then look for the tool to use for to get there. So my book map your business leads you through the process of getting clear on where you want to go, how you're going to get there, and then allows you to check in each month to keep you focused so you don't get distracted by everything else that you could be paying attention to. That process, the process of map your business needs to come before you do anything else, including listening to podcasts, reading books, taking classes. Um, I have Starship Captains first go through that process of the big picture in their business. We call it charting your stars, finding your North Star, then map making on the next goal, and then take the classes you want to take, get the support you need to support, use the tools in the toolbox. The first thing has to be for you to decide. Now, that's easy to say, and you really talked about, Selma, why it's so hard to do because you're afraid of missing something. You're afraid that if you don't immediately put everything into use, you're going to fail. And you're not alone in that fear. I have that fear all the time too. Like if I miss something, it's all gonna fall apart. But the truth is you're never gonna fail because of one missed podcast episode. And I know you know that. Like when I say that sentence, you're like, well, yeah, duh, okay. I'm not all gonna fail because I missed one podcast episode. There is not one thing that's gonna cause total success or total failure, ever. In anything, there is not one thing. You can't boil anything important down to just one thing, right? Being healthy, parenting, successful marriage, successful business. It doesn't come down to just one thing. It comes down to consistency and some foundational issues. But there's not one topic that if you just did this one thing, everything would be great. It's going to be a lot of small things consistently. It's going to be defining success for yourself, setting a goal, taking the steps to it, becoming consistent in being effective, then realizing, oh, I need to change things. I need to switch things up and then making changes and then becoming consistent in those changes. Nothing is going to blow up, either good blow up or bad blow up because of one thing. You will learn what you need to learn when you need to learn it. So how I avoid this information overwhelm is when I'm working on a project or have a goal, I don't listen to any business podcasts that are outside of that project or that goal. So like one of the podcasts I really loved was um, Online Marketing Made Easy with Amy someone. I'll link her up in the show notes. Um, And she has great, really practical information, but it is not always something I'm working on. So if she does an amazing episode on how to do webinars or how to do an email sequence, but I'm not in the middle of launching with a webinar or an email sequence, and instead I'm in the middle of writing a class, it, it is just distracting to me. And I just get like worried that I'm not doing enough if I listen to an episode that's about something I'm not currently working on. So I decided to just cut them out. 
and I listen to podcast episodes related directly to my goal or related to my mindset or related to my work day maybe, but I keep them focused on what I'm working on right then. The same is true for you. This is actually why I make so much about Explore Your Enthusiasm, about how to think about your business. My classes and my books have very practical do this next step. Like they walk you through the process of doing the work. That's the difference. The classes walk you through the process of doing the work. The podcast episodes are about how to think about your business, how to think about what you need to do. Um, because I know you're listening to your podcast episodes and doing whatever it is you're doing right? When you're ready to take a class, then you go and buy the class and do the class. So ignore the stuff that's not related to your goal. How do you let, how do you do that though? How do you let go of the scramble and the overwhelm and the pressure that if you don't get the right information, it's all going to fall apart? Comes back to trust. You have to trust a few foundational things. Number one, this is doable. Your goal is reachable without you going crazy. It's doable and reachable. The second thing you have to believe is that you are capable of doing it. You are going to be able to do it and you're going to be able to learn what you need to learn in order to make it happen. So learning to trust yourself and learning to trust this process that you will learn what you need to learn in the time you need to learn it, it's not easy. And it's made more complicated because we live in a world that's constantly telling you, you're not enough, you're not doing enough, you need to listen to other people in order to be better, in order to know better, in order to do enough, you're just not enough. So when we live in that world, it's easy to doubt that we can trust ourselves to learn the thing when we need to learn it and to basically do the thing we know to do. And even in our own community, in the small business community, there are teachers telling you that they have that one answer, that there is that one thing. And if you don't do this one thing, you're going to fail, right? There's a lot of blog posts and sales pages that say that to you. But that's just a marketing tactic. The fact is, your whole business is built on consistency. If there's one thing, it's trust yourself, focus, and then take consistent action. See, that's not one thing, actually. That's three things. Because you can't there is no one thing you're going to miss out on that's going to make everything fall apart. I promise you. I have spent over 12 years in business, most of the time wanting to find the one thing that would make my business succeed. Asking people, what is the one thing you did that changed your business? It's never one thing. It's always consistent action. It's always trying things. It's always holding experiments, figuring out the results, holding a different experiment, talking with your customers. So, in order to cut down on information overwhelm, I'm going to give you homework, but I'm going to keep it short because you have other things you're working on. Number one, write down your next goal for the next three or six months. What's the next thing you're going for? Tangible, measurable, what is it? Number two, what is the next step you need to take to get there? What is the action you can take in your next half hour to hour of quiet working time that you can take to get towards that goal? And if you don't know that, use Map Your Business to break it down, to break down your goal into milestones and then break those down into actions and then what is the next action? You can find Map Your Business on Amazon, wherever, whatever country you're in, find it there. And then do you need to learn anything or do you just need to do that step? 99% of the steps that you're going to take towards any goal, you already know how to do it. You don't need to learn anything, you just need to implement what you already know. So what is the next step to get you there? Step three, do that step. Do that thing. Go do it. That's how you're going to defeat overwhelm is by regularly reminding yourself, okay, what is my goal? What is the next thing I need to do to reach my goal? What can I do to reach my goal? Some people start every day by asking themselves that, that question. What are the three things I could do today that would move me closer to my goal? Other people think that all through once, come up with a list. Each day, just pick two or three things from the list. You do it in the way that works for you, but basically the idea is you're going to take steps to reach your goal. You're not going to just implement everything you learn. So when you come across something you need to learn, a next step you don't know how to do, go find information for it. Set a timeline of how long you're going to take learning it and then do it. You can search my, top, my site for topics like pricing, profit, marketing, goal setting, or you can search your favorite resources like uh, Creative Live or Amazon or your library. But don't keep binging on information. Binging on information is a way to avoid doing the things you know you need to do. So don't avoid, take action, and don't worry about it. The more you do this, the more you focus your energy on doing what you know you need to do, the faster you're going to see growth 
and the more you're going to learn, it's safe to trust yourself. Your trust in yourself is going to get better and stronger and be more kind of like off the top of your head. That's what you go to. And your action taking muscles are going to get better and stronger and it's going to be easier and easier for you to take action. So if you want to see that bigger picture, if you want to make that plan, check out my book, Map Your Business on Amazon. If you've already used Map Your Business and you love it, leave a review on Amazon. A lot of you have told me it's really helped you cut out distractions and get more done and reach your goals. If that's you and you've loved it, go leave a review on Amazon. It helps other people know that it's worked for you. So thank you so much for listening. I hope this has helped. I hope you have a very enthusiastic day. And now it's time to go get things done. 